called the member for Melbourne Ports. Thank you, Speaker. Um, uh, my interest in uh, democracy and uh, democratic practices uh, in Australia long predated my uh, role as a parliamentarian, which I've had since 1998. Unfortunately, I'm not involved with uh, JSM anymore, but uh, <clears throat> no one has argued uh, longer, harder and in more detail on this issue than I have uh, about these malevolent changes to the Electoral Act made by the previous Liberal government in 2006. The 2006 legislation was brought in by the then Liberal government with the worst possible intentions, uh, as the previous uh, sp uh, speaker from La Trobe suggested. At the time, the purported reasons for the change was that the legislation was designed to improve the integrity of the electoral roll. However, the actual reason for the 2006 changes was exactly the opposite. Simply put, the real intent of the 2006 changes that this legislation will partially invalidate was that it was expected to assist uh, the Liberal Party in the 2007 uh, and subsequent elections. The particular change that this legislation will repeal is the onerous requirement whereby one group of declaration voters, those casting a provisional vote, must provide some form of identification, photo, uh, photo identification usually, uh, for their vote to count. Provisional voters are sought when a voter arrives at a polling booth on election day, gives their name to the official, but finds they're not on the roll. So the AEC provisionally issues a vote, the uh, voter fills it out, it's put in an envelope with their name and address on it. Under Liberal Government Changes Board in 2006, the voter must provide valid uh, ID, like a driver's licence, on the spot or present to an AEC office with a valid ID within a week. Later in the week, uh, the Australian uh, Electoral Commission checked uh, the voters' details and the AEC agrees that they should indeed be on the roll. Their ballot paper is uh, then counted if their vote is considered valid under this existing system. Now, previously, of course, what was the... Uh, the system under which uh, the Liberal Party had won the 96, 98, 2001 and 2004 elections. It was the quite logical system of matching signatures. So if an Australian voter turned up at a polling booth, signed the outside of his envelope that he was that person, uh, the highly responsible officials of the Electoral Commission took this back to the AEC, matched it with their existing signature, and they were then included in the role. The ethos of the Australian Electoral Commission and Australian Democracy Deputy Speaker ought to be including as many valid votes as possible, not finding excuses to exclude them because they're in convenient categories of people who uh, might vote for a different political party. And of course, this whole issue of provisional voting, of so-called integrity of the role, is completely the wrong issue. The real issue for Australian democracy ought to be the fact that there are 2.5 million Australians who didn't cast a vote at the last election. That is the scandal of uh, the electoral system at the moment, not uh, the fact that uh, uh, the so-called integrity of the role is under in, in, uh, invalid in, in, in any way. At the 2007 election, 27,544 citizens voted provisionally uh, but had their vote rejected because of the new requirements. Similarly, at the extremely closely fought elections of 2010, 28,000 citizens voted but were later disqualified because of the Liberal changes. Further, the AEC noted that the admission rate for the, for the Senate provisional votes fell from 62.23 in 2004 to 25% in 2007 concluding that if the 2004 admission rate had prevailed in 2007, an additional 62,000 Australians would have been counted um, in uh, the Senate voting. 62,000 of our fellow citizens were excluded from voting by these bodgy changes, which we're getting rid of, uh, which we promised to get rid of uh, at uh, both elections. I'm very proud to be associated with this legislation to re-enfranchising uh, my fellow Australians. Why don't people present uh, f a photo ID when they vote, you might ask? Mostly because they don't have a driver's licence. OK, you might ask, but provisional voters still have the opportunity of providing their, their uh, uh, ID to uh, the AEC within a week after the elections. Why don't they do that? Well, just think of how people 
ordinary Australian citizens who are not as involved in politics as we are in this House on both sides um, <coughs> think. The election result is already decided. Who would take time off from work, go in and find an AEC office, fill out a form to cast a vote that no one would pay any attention to? People are busy working. How many know where their Australian Electoral Commission office is? I bet you the Deputy Speaker's office, uh, uh, electoral office is miles and miles from many of his voters. In, in an inner city electorate like mine, we are forced to share it with the electorate of Melbourne and to, to park in there, um, it takes you an hour to drive round Castleton Place, let alone being able to find a, an existing parking space. So this is, a, this is another sort of <coughs> attempt to make things difficult for people that should be made, should be made easy. Uh, in some regional electorates, as I said, um, the AEC and the post office are many hours away. Uh, not only do they have to prove their identity with a driver's licence or other prescribed document, there are other requirements for ID, including uh, approving the val validity of their signature. Basically, it's a lot of paperwork that um, uh, people after an election are not willing to be uh, uh, bothered with. Uh, these Liberal changes to the provisional voting uh, method resulted in votes being, uh, many voters being disqualified who were admitted in the past. You might say that votes being disqualified would reflect the wider voting pattern across the nation. So in the big scheme of things, the disqualification of 30,000 votes or so really wouldn't affect the overall result. This is not so. The types of people who make provisional votes fit into a particular demographic type, uh, very capably outlined by the member for La Trobe in her speech made just now. And of course, this is why the legislation was produced against all of the advice from the Australian Electoral Commission, against all of the advice from all of the cephalogical experts, one after one, who said, including Professor Colin Hughes, including uh, Malcolm McCarris, a great uh, uh, person who the Liberal Party often quotes as a great electoral expert. All of these people testified, argued against this, and it was quite clear uh, that this was being done for political purposes. The average number of provisional votes in the ten most indigenous seats in this country is 1.76 of the total vote. The, average, the national average is 1.23. In other words, a half per cent higher in, in average in areas with large indigenous populations. Without a licence, provisional voters need to provide a passport or a birth certificate in order to vote. No one expects <laughs> to have to present the birth certificate when they vote. For most Australians, there is no need to prove ID at a polling booth at all. It will not surprise anyone with passing knowledge of Australian politics if I point out the particular demographics described uh, vote um, largely Labor or Green or left of centre parties. And this is the, the reason I argue that the uh, previous government made these terrible changes to provisional voting. In my view, if the number of provisional votes in the 2004 election were compared to the 2007 election, enough Labor voters were disenfranchised to allow the coalition to win at least four seats, Bowman, Dixon, McEwen and Swan, that uh, otherwise <coughs> would have been uh, uh, won by the uh, previous Labor government in 2007. Of course, it didn't affect the election result, fortunately, because a Labor won by a sufficiently large margin for those four seats not to be uh, germane to the result. But, of course, that was not the plan of the people who put into uh, 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 practice this uh, nefarious legislation. Professor Brian Costa of Swinburne University, one of Australia's most respected political scientists, told the Joint Select Committee on Electoral Matters, I think a case can be made that it changed the result. We know that provisional voters, because of their choice, are not a mirror image of the electorate as a whole. They tend to be more Labor and Green than Liberal, National or anything else. That's, that's his quote. I expect that the rejection of the 28,000 voters in the 2010 election may have affected the results in the number of electorates as well. In the light of the result of the 2010 election, every Australian now knows that the fate of one electorate can decide the fate of a government. So if the 2004, 2007 result of changing the result because of these provisional voting changes had been affected uh, at the 2010 election, these malevolent, nefarious, bodgy changes, which are now being invalidated by this legislation, would have won the Liberal National Party office um, on these uh, uh, anti-democratic manoeuvrings. Australia, despite being a young country, is in fact an old and strong democracy. 
especially when we looked at it in a global context. Even before Federation, Australia was known for its uh, progressive electoral policies, um, including, as the member for McKellar knows, giving women the right to vote before many other countries, leading the world, uh, in fact, in that, and in, in, in fact, introducing the secret ballot, which for many years was known throughout the world as the Australian ballot because of the way it was, uh, it was done. This wasn't done in other countries. However, the Liberals' 2006 changes to the provisional voting procedures are an example of regressive rather than progressive electoral policy. This bill will restore the Electoral Act to its pre-2006 statutes where the law, custom and practice established after over almost a century. I would have thought that was the conservative practice with which the member for McKellar would identify, not sort of regressive changes designed to affect a result at one election um, or two elections. The voter's signature provided on the declaration envelope in which the provisional votes are contained would be compared with the signature of the elector which exists in its original or subsequent enrolment forms which were held by the AEC. It was good enough for the Liberal Party in 1996. It was good enough for the Liberal Party in 1998. It was good enough for the Liberal Party in 2001. It was good enough for the Liberal... In all of those elections, are you arguing, the member for McKellar, that these elections were somehow fraudulent? Are you saying that they were not won on a proper basis? We, we of course, conceded McKellar. the fact that they were won by your side of politics and the signature system that we had for nearly a century of comparing signatures was the system at the time. Come on. We know, we know uh, why these changes were made in 2006. It's blindingly obvious to everyone now. Perhaps the most powerful endorsement of this legislation comes from the key institution responsible for safeguarding the integrity of our elections, the Australian Electoral Commission. In its submissions to the Joint Standing Committee on Electoral Matters, inquiries into the 2007 and 2010 federal elections, the AEC commend, commented that the requirement for production of evidence of identity for provisional voters should be repealed. The AEC, the neutral body responsible for our electoral legislation, commended that the requirement for the production of evidence of identity of provisional voters should be repealed. A knife-edge federal election and the strong support of Australia's key election body. Um, I can think of better, re of better reasons for repealing this unjust, uh, uh, and uh, I can't think of any better reasons for repealing this unjust and politically motivated legislation brought in by the Liberals in 2006. There are many things that this government is doing in the areas of uh, early closure of the ro rolls uh, in this area of provisional voting. Uh, they are completely the wrong issues. They are the issues that were focused on by the Conservatives in order to divert from the fact that in a compulsory voting system we have 2.5 million Australians who for a variety of reasons did not participate in the, uh, in the Australian, last Australian election. This is a pattern that's been obvious for a long period of time. The Australian Electoral Commission working neutrally will do as much as it can if it's given the powers by this parliament to enrol as many people as possible. Surely this is the ethos that should inform all Democrats in this parliament, that as many Australians should be empowered to vote as possible, and getting people off the roll is exactly the wrong attitude. Disenfranchising Australians is the wrong attitude, and this is what we're doing with this legislation. I'm very proud to be associated with this bill.